Hello. Today I'm going to show you something really strange. It's an effect I've seen on a customer's tape. It was a video 8 tape, though in theory this could happen to some other formats as well. Someone had made a terrible mistake and we finished up with this picture. Now it's not just terrible quality, there's something fundamentally wrong with that picture. It's upside down. What could possibly happen to a video cassette that could make the picture upside down? It was a set of tapes and some of them are mouldy and I've done some videos explaining how to solve that problem. Some of the tapes that were not so mouldy had a different issue where people had done joins in the tape which were with sellotape on them or just sticky tape. So they're not proper splices. There were a whole number of these on some of the tapes and I had to cut all them out and splice them properly and I've done a video about that too. So what was going on? Well, whoever had done all those hideous splices had cut the tape for some reason off the spools at the end. I don't know what their reasoning was behind that because I repair those tapes still on the spools. But for whatever reason, and when that person put the tape back on the spools, they'd got it the wrong way round. So they'd mounted the tape upside down. Now, there's no natural process where a tape can be upside down. You can get a tape that's twisted, that can happen. And another effect can be if the tape is wound on a spool the wrong way round, that can happen. But getting it upside down is a special kind of stupid. And why did we get an upside down picture? Or something resembling a picture? Let's see if I can uh, demonstrate that. Here's a scrap camcorder deck. What I've done is I've applied power to this motor, so I've managed to make it lace up. So this is in its laced condition, as though it was about to do a recording or playback. So the tape starts on this spool, goes through some guides here, and then onto this guide. This guide, uh, well these two are critical on the alignment um, of most video decks. And I've done a video on the past about what happens on 8mm decks when these go out of alignment, sometimes they're not locked off very well. So the tape reaches the, the head drum here, goes around in a loop to the exit guide, and then it goes via the pinch roller and capstan, and then back into the cassette. There's a few other parts here, but we don't need to worry about those quite so much at the moment. The key thing is this head drum. The head drum consists of two parts, a lower drum, which is static, that stays put, and the upper drum, which spins. The upper drum spins anti-clockwise. And it's got video head tips on it. Typically there's a minimum of two, but there can be quite a few, on, depending on the format and specifications of the machine. So as this spins, in that direction, and the tape travels quite slowly through the machine, it, if you like, draws stripes of video information on the tape. We can think of it as drawing, of course it's not a physical thing, but it draws magnetic stripes. And the way these work, if you can see the, the tape is there, and the slope of this drum relative to the tape is such that, let's look at the exit here, let's look at the end first. As it leaves the tape, it's at the top. And as that head drum approaches the tape on this side, it's at the bottom. So the video information is drawn from the bottom of the tape through to the top. There may be other tracks, depending on the video format, uh, VHS and Beta have linear and audio tracks and other things going on, but fundamentally the bulk of the tape consists of that video signal which is drawn in stripes on the tape. So if we were to unfold that into a flat piece that we can see, let this piece of paper be a videotape. And the speed of this travelling through the deck is very low compared to the speed of the head. 
to the point that we can almost think of it as being not moving at all. Of course it does, but what goes on is the drum starts at the bottom of the tape and runs to the top, but then the tape does move on a little bit and so it draws again from the bottom to the top. So remember, this is the bottom, this is the top. Those arrows are pointing to the end of each sweep. But the important thing to note is this is the start of the video information and this is the end. And since we're thinking about a TV picture, if you think of an old fashioned, let's pretend we've got a tube telly here. The picture starts at the top and is scanned in multiple lines all the way down to the bottom. And this is called a field, and it does, in the UK, 50 fields every second. So within here, this is a field, each line is a field, there are multiple individual video lines within there. Now, I'm not going to go into how many, because there are not 625, but let's just take it as read that there are this, this is one field, this is one picture, if you like. It's a still picture. There's interlacing and lines in between and all sorts of things, but let's just keep it simple. In what scenario could we have where we roughly scan these lines, but don't get the top there and the bottom of the picture there? Let's look at the different possibilities. If someone was stupid enough to cut the tape and start sellotaping it together, well, one common one is that the tape finishes up like that. And you'd say, well, there's nothing there at all. Actually, you can read some audio information, certainly on audio tapes, from the back of the tape. It tends to come out muffled and rubbish, but it's there a little bit. And so, in theory, you might be able to possibly pick up some information from the back of the tape. But look, the machine's heads are going to be travelling this way. As we scan here, we're not going to see anything of those lines because we're going to be travelling across them. So, that isn't what's happened. The tape must be the right way round with the recording surface facing the video heads. We're not looking through the back of the tape. But if we flip the tape right the way round, like that, our player's going to come along in this direction, and yes, it will see the lines. They're not going to be quite right because the tape is running, and I, I believe I'm thinking that the, the line it follows is going to be slightly wrong, but close enough that it can travel most of the line and track it. But now, instead of reading the top of the picture here and the bottom there, it's actually reading it the other way around. So if you flip the tape over like that, you can get to a situation where you're reading the picture upside down. And the camcorder puts in a pretty good effort at trying to give us some kind of picture. The way the colour is set up is all wrong, so the colour's awful, and there's various information missing and mistimed, but fundamentally you can see some kind of upside down picture. Now, would this work on other formats such as VHS or Beta? Well, possibly not so much, because on VHS or Beta you get uh, control pulses on one edge of the tape. And if you read that the other way around, you're just going to hit the, the audio signal instead of the control pulses. So you won't be able to track, and there's possibility you'll see some sort of picture, but not very much. So what I did about this, of course, was to uh, take the tape off the end spools, rotate it around correctly, and play the tape. And we got good picture and sound. Well, I hope you found this interesting. Even people who have worked in audio and video technology for a long time could be surprised to find out that uh, it's possible to uh, scan a videotape upside down and get any kind of picture. It was a surprise to me anyway. So my next video will be a little bit more working on surface mount components on some DVC Pro decks. I've got some new equipment uh, and I'll like to share that with you. 
In the meantime, please remember to like, share and especially subscribe and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.